Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and we're down here in what is another perfect day in Key West. Bright blue skies and a little bit of breeze. So today, I'm making one of my favorite things, which is green coconut curry. And we're going to be making it with cobia. Uh, Aaron had James and Lisa out. We did another dish with it. But uh, they had a bit left over, and as a thank you, I got some cobia to go home with. And this is a perfect dish uh, to represent that cobia and really make it the all-star. Um, cobia is really firm, and it has a little bit of flavor to it. Think almost like mahi-mahi or even swordfish texture. So this green curry is a perfect dish for it. Uh, something lighter might get lost in the dish, but in this one, the cobia is going to be spot on and perfect. Uh, one of the things that we're doing too, which is kind of cool, I'm going to sub out green bananas. These aren't plantains, they're bananas uh, that I found earlier. Um, went and stole them off somebody's uh, property. Two, three, four. That's pretty good. That'll be enough. Yeah. Cool. But Green bananas, my friend Erin, uh, down in Jamaica, she said that what they do is that they take them green and they boil them and they sub the boiled green bananas for potatoes. Now, normally in this coconut green curry dish, I would put potatoes, but I'm gonna try it out with the bananas. So, I've got my pot of boiling water here and what you wanna do is score them so that they're easier to peel once they're boiled and you cut both ends off. Now, from what I understand also, you get all the benefits of the banana, uh, all the potassium, everything else, but this, at this point, they have less sugar, which is always a good thing, right? We got our boiling water that we are going to salt with a decent, generous amount of our sea salt that we made. Now we put in our bananas. Now this is gonna drop the temp a little bit, but that's okay, it'll come back up to a boil. We're gonna let that ride for about 20 minutes, and then they should be cooked through. We're gonna pull them out, put them in an ice bath, dice them up, and then we'll get started on our curry. It's been 20 minutes that our green bananas have been cooking. I'm gonna turn my heat off there. Oh yeah, those are soft. Those are good. So we'll put them into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. Cool them down. And we're gonna put those aside. And right now I grabbed my ingredients to start the base of our uh, coconut green curry. Let me just dump my banana water. I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna do this on a medium low heat because I don't want anything to brown, I just want it to soften. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of olive oil. Then we have three garlic clove. Not gonna go crazy with chopping because all I'm gonna do is soften everything up and then we're gonna blend it. A little bit of ginger. And I've said before, I do chop the ginger a little bit more than the other stuff, just because it's so fibrous, it will, uh, it'll remain stringy. So it's better to cut it, cut it up a little bit there. And also with the ginger, to get the skin off, really good trick is a spoon. And all you do is drag the spoon over. And this way you get the whole bulb of ginger, rather than trying to cut the skin away or use a uh, vegetable peeler. Pretty quick. There you go. All right, one Spanish onion. That garlic and ginger already smells pretty good. A 
Okay, one shallot. This is a pretty good size shallot, so about that big. If not, I would have gotten two of the smaller ones. So the best thing about this dish is that it's so bright and versatile that you can eat it on a hot day like today, or you can make it very hearty for a cold winter day. Because in the winter, I would put potato in. I would definitely do potato and I would serve it over rice. This, I'm just gonna serve it in a bowl, no rice, and hopefully the banana lightens it up a little bit. But because it has so many bright flavors of the lime and lemongrass and things like that, it really is not bad as a hot dish on a hot day. Okay, two jalapeno. Some scallion. And we're gonna put some scallion at the end too that won't be cooked off. And the stems of cilantro. Woo! Those jalapenos are hot ones. A little bit of salt. <laughs> Those jalapenos got me. Okay, so while I have these simmering, and we want them really nice and soft because we're gonna blend them. So I'm gonna let those simmer for a while. But right now I'm gonna start adding my spices because I want the oil in the spices to be released too. I don't wanna dump the spices into a liquid. I want them to heat up and kind of permeate. So a little bit of black pepper, some coriander, some cumin, some turmeric, The turmeric we don't have to go crazy with because we have the ginger in there. It's very similar flavors. But the turmeric is going to give it that kind of Indian Thai feel. And now this is what's really going to set it off. And this is ground lemongrass. Now you could get the lemongrass stalks, put them in, you cook with them, it flavors everything, and then you take them out. I kind of like it this way because it remains in the dish and gives a little bit more of a hit of that lemongrass really, really makes everything nice and bright. So one spoonful of that. Now I can feel everything getting a little bit softer, but I want it to go even more. So this whole process is gonna take about 15, 20 minutes to get it to where I want it to be. Getting soft though, we're in good shape. Now you also wanna keep it moving because those herbs and spices can burn a lot faster than the veg. So you add them a little while in because then the veg has released some of the water and that gives a protective barrier between the bottom of the pan and uh, your spices. But that water evaporates pretty quick. So as you see it to start to stick, either add a little bit more uh, oil or if your veg is where they need to be, which we are, can add your coconut milk. And now here's two different brands. This was something interesting while I was looking for coconut milk the other day. These two are uh, natural brands. And by natural, I mean that they have three ingredients in them, which is coconut water guar gum. This one is coconut water and guar gum. And the funny thing about it is that as I was going through a lot of the cans, man, there's some gnarly stuff in those. Some of them got like 18 ingredients. So I always try to find the least amount of ingredients, even if it costs a little bit more money, it's a better product. You're just putting better stuff into your body. Now those were in the house cold and that's why they were so thick, but you'll see right now as they warm up, they are completely dissipating and turning into liquid. All right, now this, I'm gonna bring it up to a boil. Once it boils, we'll bring it down to a simmer and we're gonna let this simmer for 20 minutes. 
Now while that is boiling, we're gonna peel our bananas. And again, thank you Aaron for showing me this trick with scoring them, because otherwise peeling them is not fun. Try a piece. It tastes like a cross between yucca and potato. It is really good. And that's gonna go perfect. It really doesn't have a banana flavor to it, which could be a little off-putting to some people probably. But uh, no, this is gonna be really, really nice and a nice texture in there with the fish. This is gonna be great. Gonna finish cutting these. Like I said, bring this to a boil, bring it down to a simmer, 20 minutes, and we'll be back here and cut up the fish. Our curry's been simmering about 20 minutes. Ooh. Make sure our veg is all soft. And it is. Now comes the fun part. You get to blend it. And again, no white t-shirt. Do this in a dark colored shirt. Now we give it a taste, see if it needs any adjusting at all. A little bit of salt. Doesn't need pepper, doesn't need spice. That is very spicy. So now, Gonna add the juice of one lime. Chop up some fresh scallions and some fresh cilantro. And our cilantro, I'm not afraid of the stems. A lot of people go through, they pick all the leaves. The stems to me add a little more texture. They're full of flavor. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pick through the leaves. I like them. Our boiled green banana. Add that in. Give that a stir. Now this is still on very, very, very low heat. But we're going to put the lid on. And there's a reason why. Let me get the star of the show. This is our cobia. So it's two tail pieces, which is okay because we're gonna put it in there, it's gonna soften up. Uh, cobia, like I said, it's gonna have a texture like mahi, something like that, a little bit more firm, um, has a little bit of taste to it. You know, not, not fishy by any means, but definitely has some taste if you were to eat it raw. So I'm gonna cut it into about dice-sized pieces, about that big. Now I said in the last video too, uh, James and Lisa are both incredible Spiros and incredible photographers. So we're gonna link their Instagram and uh, go give them a follow. It's really, really great. Uh, I love seeing both of their, their art and their adventures. Okay, I'm gonna bring my heat up just a little bit, just a little bit until I get a bit of a sizzle in there. And I'm gonna show you a very important part to the dish. So we have everything in there that we want in there. We have it all seasoned perfectly. I don't need to season this fish at all. I want the fish to shine. This is spicy enough, limey enough, salty enough that it's gonna carry over. So getting it up, it's just a little bit of bubbles. Now what I'm gonna do is turn the heat completely off and I'm going to put in my cobia. 
And now... I'm going to put on my lid and I'm going to leave it alone for about 10-15 minutes. When I come back to this, that Kobe is going to be perfectly cooked all the way through, still moist. It's going to be slow cooked. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So we'll see you in about 15 minutes. Our Kobe has been sitting. I gave it about 15 minutes. Take the lid off. I love Thai cooking. I love Indian cooking. I just, it lends itself to fish because it has a lot of citrus in it. It's really bright flavors. And for me, it just really goes hand in hand with fish. So let's get a bowl going. And again, you could serve this over rice, you could serve it over potatoes, but because it is so hot out today, this is how I'm eating it. And also, just to show you, so in those 15 minutes, here's a piece of our cobia. Look at that. Look at that. Cooked perfectly through. Mm. Still moist. Still juicy. Oh my God. Those boiled green bananas, I don't miss the potato. They are completely the same texture and they have that almost yucca taste. If you're not familiar with yucca, it's like a boiled potato. It is uh, another root vegetable, but man, that is bright, spicy. Mmm. That fresh cilantro and fresh scallion at the end, just a nice kick. That is our coconut green curry with cobia. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this. If you enjoyed making this dish with me, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.